Hey everyone, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and in this episode of C++ Crash Course, we're going to be talking about how we kind of traverse around in the debugger. So let's go ahead and compile our code, and we'll just do this with the dash G flag to add some extra debugging information for GDB. So uh, with that being said, let's start a debugger, and we've started debugging. So we'll go ahead and start by, uh, you know, we can go ahead and open up our text user interface Right, and we can cycle through using control X2. I usually like having the register values and then the source code, or you know, if I just uh, if I don't care about the register values, I'll just have the source code. So we do start, and start will take us to the beginning of our program. Right, so now we're at the very beginning of execution. And if we want to go ahead and move down a source line, we can do in or uh, next, right? And we'll go ahead and move down. And if we want to get a value, we can say print in. Right, so n is now 10 because we've executed, you know, the source line. Right, and we can continue on. You know, in this case, I'll just do n. So I can even look at things like uh, memory. So here I've got sum. Right, so sum is an integer pointer. So I can do what happens when I do print sum. Well, it even tells me that it's an integer pointer. And if I want to say dereference a pointer, I can just do x, and then the address, and it will go ahead and tell me what's at that address. So right now. Uh, even we haven't done anything with it, that address is zero. Uh, and then, you know, one of the other nice things we can do is uh, breakpoints, right? So breakpoints say, I want you to just continue running the code, you know, as fast as you can, uh, but I want you to stop once you get to a certain point. And so this could be, say, uh, I could break at main, right? So I can give it a name of a function, or I can give it a source code line. So I can say B24. And this will break at line 24. And you can see there's a little B right here next to the line. Um, another nice thing that I can do is I can set a command to execute when I get to that line. So when I do command and then the breakpoint number, so the breakpoint it says is 2. So if I do command 2, it'll give me a little prompt that says, you know, tell me what you want to have executed when you hit this line. Um, and then just uh, type end when you don't want any more commands. So you know, let's say, because I'm breaking before we're doing this C out, let's say I want to go ahead and just print whatever the sum is. So I can just say, you know, print sum of zero, and then, you know, I can just say end. That's good enough for us. So um, when I do that, I can go ahead and do continue. So continue will continue on execution until I hit this break point. Right, and it goes all the way through, and it says that um, the value is 501. Right, and if I go ahead and just do continue again, it'll get to the end of execution, and we get this printout that says the sum is 501. Now, uh, whenever we get prints, a lot of times this will go ahead and break the screen. Um, great feature, right? But if we go ahead and do Control L, it'll repaint everything for us, right? And that'll go ahead and fix things up. So now our program's you know finished, and we can go back up to the start if we want to and restart our program with start. Right, so there we are, we're back at the very top of our program. And, you know, we still have this breakpoint here. And if I want to get rid of it, I can do, say, clear and the line number or whatever the breakpoint I want to clear. I say clear 24. Now it's breakpoint uh, deleted, uh, breakpoint 2. Now, another nice thing I can do, so let's go ahead and go back down. So I'll do next and next. And right, I've got, you know, uh, sum, right? So sum is a pointer. Now, a very nice thing that we can do. Uh, if we want to say, you know, if we have some kind of error, when we want to watch a particular value or see when a value changes, we can set a hardware watch point, right? And this will track, you know, in this case, say where an integer is, you know, being changed. So we can say watch, and then it want, I want it to watch that four byte region, right? That happens to be this integer. So I can go ahead and just copy that here, right? And this will go ahead and set a hardware watch point. So it'll stop every time. Uh, the value at this location changes, right? So I can go ahead and do uh, continue from here, right? Without any additional breakpoints, and it will go ahead and go ahead and tell me, okay, what's the old value? What's the new value? And we're talking about whatever is at this location, right? And in this case, it happens to be uh, sum, right? So let's go ahead and you know continue again. So if I do Control P, they'll give me the previous command. Right, if I do the up arrows, right, that we normally do in a shell, this actually moves me in the source window. So let's do continue. 
right? So now we see the old value is three, new value is 20. And we can do this a couple more times, right? And we see, you know, gradually it's changing over time. And now we finally got to the very end. The sum is 521, and that's what we saw, you know, the last value that was updated using that hardware watch point, right? And that's, you know, that's kind of the basics of setting up hardware watch points. So what's the use of all these things? Why do I care about setting commands? Why do I care about uh, hardware watch points? Well, you know, one of the things that we like about setting commands is if we have intermittent bugs, right? So we may have bugs that don't happen every single time we execute, right? So if we have, you know, maybe some error that's based upon, say, a user input, then that might not happen every single time the program executes. Or maybe it's something based upon, you know, random number generation, where maybe sometimes we go out of bounds on something and we end up having a segmentation fault, but it doesn't happen every time. So when we have commands, we can do something like, uh, let's go ahead and go to start, and we can do something like, um, you know, we can say, you know, let's go ahead and, you know, quit out and reset everything, right? So let's go to start and we can do something like, let's set a breakpoint at main and we can set a breakpoint at that end line. So we can go back to the text user interface. Actually, let's just do control X1, right? We just need the source line and do a break at 24. Right, and then what we can do is we can say, okay, well, at main, right, I, so I'll just go ahead and do command, uh, and then that was going to be at breakpoint uh, two, right, so that's at main. I just want it to continue execution, right, and end, and then a breakpoint at, let's say, uh, that's a breakpoint three, or rather command three. Right, and when I'm here, right, this is at the very end of the program, I want it to go ahead and um, start the program again, right? So start from the very beginning, right? And that's it. And then I can go ahead and run this, right? So I can just say, uh, you know, let's say, you know, start the program again, right? And so now it'll go ahead and keep running, keep running. And so right now, uh, because we've exceeded the amount of lines written on the page, it'll go ahead and prompt me saying if I want to continue or not. So I can press return to continue. And if I you know, really don't care about seeing that anymore, I can do set pagination off, right? And then it will no, it will no, longer, uh, it'll no longer bug me anymore, right? And so now it'll just keep running and keep running and keep running, you know, in this case, infinitely because we don't have any bugs in our program. But this is a really useful way if we have, say, have an intermittent bug that we're trying to uh, find, right? And then we can set a hardware you know, watch point or something and we can do something at a hardware watch point, right? But that's going to be, you know, the basics of, you know, traversing code when we're debugging. Next time, we'll look at stuff that's a little more interesting, uh, talking about you know, capturing a record of instructions executed. That way, we can actually reverse debug, so we can kind of execute instructions in reverse. Uh, and this is really useful if we, say, have a stack smashing bug where, you know, we, you know, destroyed our stack and we try to do something like backtrace, which we'll talk about later. Um, we don't have a stack anymore, but if we go ahead and record all the previously executed instructions, we can still go backwards, right? So we can reverse step an instruction. But that's going to go ahead and do it for this time. As always, feel free to, feel free to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So we looked at C++ crash course today, and then we're under debugging. And if you want to step through you know, this example, you can go ahead and go to Traversal. The code's right here. Feel free to check it out. Let me know if you have any questions or you know, if there's any particular videos that you would like me to you know, work on next related to debugging or optimization. Well, like I said, that's going to do it this time. I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.